Today's Dracula had a very brief acting career, but that's probably just because he had his hands full being a rock star. Harry Nilsson was born in Brooklyn, New York City in 1941. His father abandoned the family when Harry was still young, and his mother's close-knit family helped to support her as she raised her children. They didn't have a lot of money, which led to Harry taking on a lot of jobs as the family moved around. In 1960, Nilsson would lie his way into a position at a bank, working on their computers. When his deception was discovered, the bank had already been so impressed with his work that they kept him on anyway. This gave Nilsson the ability to continue focusing on his singing and songwriting career. As a young unknown, Nilsson would record songs under the pseudonyms Bo Pete and Johnny Niles, as well as co-writing three songs with Phil Spector. In 1966, Nilsson signed with RCA, who would release his first album, Pandemonium Shadow Show. The album did not do well in sales, but attracted industry attention. Beatles press officer Derek Taylor reportedly bought a box of copies of the album to give out to his friends and associates, including copies that he shipped to each of the members of the Beatles. This would lead to John Lennon and Paul McCartney dropping Nilsson's name in a press conference catapulting Nilsson into the spotlight and ultimately leading to a friendship and professional collaborations between Nilsson and the members of the Fab Four. In his music career, Nilsson would wind up being credited with releasing the first ever remix album, the first mashup, and would be listed in Rolling Stones' 100 Greatest Songwriters of All Time. In 1980, Nilsson would enter a state of semi-retirement following the assassination of John Lennon. He would continue to write songs for television themes and for movies, but he focused on his work with gun control organizations and other charities. In 1990, it would be revealed that his financial advisor, Cindy Sims, had embezzled almost all of his income from his work as a singer and songwriter. Married and with six children, Nilsson learned that he had been saddled with thousands of dollars in debt, with only $300 in the bank. Sims would serve less than two years in prison for the embezzlement. Nilsson would return to recording and also began work on a Best Of compilation for RCA Records, as well as recording vocals for a brand new album. Following his death from heart failure in 1994, the Best Of collection would release under the title Personal Best but his final album would not be released until 2019 under the title Lost and Found. Now tell me of yourself. Was your journey pleasant? It had its moments. And your musical studies, do they progress? I suppose so. Over the years, I've been into just about every conceivable type of music there is, you know. Mm, splendid. And your health? You feel no stress? No. I'm in great shape. In 1972, Ringo Starr was experimenting with new ideas to see what direction he wanted to go in with his entertainment career. He was still recording singles and working as a session musician, but he had also started concentrating on films, appearing in 200 Motels and Blind Man, and directing Born to Boogie. It was around this time that Starr sat in as a session musician on Nilsson's Son of Schmilson album. While Son of Schmilson satirized horror movie motifs, Ringo said that he didn't make the connection when he decided a couple of months later that he wanted to film a modern-day rock-and-roll Dracula movie. He would only realize the coincidence of casting Nilsson in the role of the young Dracula after his wife Maureen bought him a copy of the completed album. The movie stars Nilsson as the young, only about 100 years old, Count Down, the heir to the throne of Dracula after Dracula had been staked by an anonymous assailant. Count Down is unique, 
a vampire who is conceived and born, not created, and is tutored by the magician Merlin to ultimately take Dracula's place on the throne as the king of the underworld. But in the meantime, Countdown balances the realities of being a merciless vampire with his love of rock and roll and the feelings he's starting to have for the young woman who is helping to organize his coronation ceremony. Nielsen gives Dracula an interesting spin by essentially not working too hard to act. Countdown is a young vampire who is troubled by the weight of his responsibilities as the heir to the Dracula name and everything that goes with it, but he's also just a young man who wants to figure things out for himself. He's a Dracula who doesn't hate what he is, but who would rather be jamming with his band on the stage at a cramped basement nightclub. He's a Dracula who can, in fact, be saved by the powers of love and music. You are nevertheless a vampire, the son of Count Dracula, a king. Brian, you've looked after me all my life and I respect your opinion, but I've got to see Merlin. He knows something about this. Ultimately, Ringo Starr was not pleased with how the movie turned out. He reportedly brought in Graham Chapman and Bernard McKenna to look over the completed film and create a Monty Python-esque script that could be overdubbed on it, complaining that the original film didn't make any sense. That soundtrack was actually recorded, but was shelved without being used because, as Ringo said in an interview, it makes even less sense now. Son of Dracula sat on the shelves at Apple until 1974, before Ringo is able to find a distributor for it, but it barely made a mark upon its release. It debuted in Atlanta, Georgia, but movie theaters were reluctant to pick up the underperforming film. The movie has never had an official home release, not even on VHS or Laserdisc, let alone DVD or Blu-ray. If you look around, you can probably find a bootleg. That's reportedly what Harry Nilsson himself did for a party in 1982, although he said later that the party attendees largely ignored the movie. And that's all a shame. The movie's major issue is that it suffers from a lack of resources. Aside from that, it has a cast that was having a lot of fun making a movie, a great soundtrack, a fresh take on the vampire story, and an interesting cosmology when it comes to monsters. The whole thing has the feel of a low-budget movie shot by a group of friends who are more interested in having fun together than in turning out a polished product, and that makes it kind of frisky, like a puppy. How about you? What did you think of Harry Nilsson's performance in Son of Dracula? That is, if you saw Son of Dracula. The soundtrack was released on vinyl. However, it has never seen a re-release. Not surprising given the fact that almost all of the music comes directly off of Nielsen Schmielsen and Son of Schmielsen, with only one original track, Daybreak, which was recorded by Nielsen specifically for for this movie, and which appears on most of the best of compilations that have been released since. Drop down into the comments, let me know, have you ever actually caught Son of Dracula? These days, if you find it, it is more than likely going to be at a midnight movie screening. While you're down there in the comments, feel free to click that like button, Maybe subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you ring the bell so that you get notifications of new videos. There's also a share button there if you have a friend who is a particular fan of Ringo Starr or Harry Nilsson, or heck, a particular fan of Dracula while we're at it. Until next time, this is Glenn Williams, the film optimist, reminding you to watch like it means something.